Hey, you're on the mic with BM and C. Ooh, oh Lord. Oh my. Yeah. It's What's yours today, today? love. It's, um Wow. What's yes. The, it's all it's all you. It's all me. All um, you fluttering open, now. I, and listen, people, I don't know what she's gonna say. <laughs> this is totally brand new. We're we're changing all kinds of things on the on the podcast. So today T will be leading and she'll be leading for a few more so get used to it. So we flip it back and forth. So this is a, this is going to be a new change to the podcast. So okay. Yes. That's right. Yes. I had to explain. <laughs> I explained because you, you're like, why am? It's not me. Today I'm sitting back. Let's go. All right. Yes. Today I want to talk about um, maybe about a week ago. I have reference um, and passing jokingly a guy being a king. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was very much so unjokingly because um, pretty much he doesn't have his stuff together. Mm -hmm. Okay, So I technically would like to speak about how we're referencing a lot of people as queens and kings today. Mm -hmm. But they're really not exactly walking in that space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, So we have our kings. Right. Mm-hmm. And someone said, well, by definition, what is a king? Right? True. Um, does a king teach? What does he have to give? Hmm. What do you say? Do you well, think? Hmm. A king. Mm-hmm. Now, my definition of king would be a person who would be a, a leader, mm-hmm. first of all, a leader of men, um, and be able to be a protector of his queen and his family um he's also he's stern enough to to you know get that to to earn that respect as a king but yet he has empathy to understand things are going on with his his queen and his prince and his princesses which is his family Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and be able to migrate between all of them and still be a king so in today's world, when you look at yourself versus the average man, oh, right, mm-hmm. how do we make that difference today? Okay, because we got to break it down. <laughs> we we got to talk about what's oh, really Lord. like, what's the reality of today, right? Because we basically are saying we're common folk walking around mm-hmm. with people who are just not as common as the common folk. Like, yeah. what's how the song goes? There's levels to it, mm-hmm. right? Yes, because yes. it's still. To this day, there's levels to all of this, mm-hmm. right? Yes, and yes. we might not be dressed all the way up to wear a crown every day when you're walking down the street, mm-hmm. but um, we're not all the same. No, no, we're not. And I think the term king has been thrown around a lot mm-hmm. nowadays mm-hmm. Um, and it's truly been watered down. At the little diluted. Uh, Absolutely. It's, it's really diluted. It's like it's almost like I want to get a shot of Cavassier and really somehow drop the whole <laughs> bag of ice in it. <laughs> or oh, as much ice you can fit in a glass. Uh-huh. Now you're just saying, I think it's some alcohol in it, but I just can't quite taste it. Right. That's what king, the new kings new, seem to me. And the new kings to me are, I'm just going to just divide it. You have guys who use the term a lot. I'm the king and I deserve this, this, and this. But you can't even do the simple thing to even be considered a king. Mm-hmm. You even considered a, you, you're more of a joker than a king because you use the term, but one you don't you don't lead men, you don't lead people, and you can't take care of your queen, and you can't take care of your little princess and your little princesses, and you're so stuck in a particular mindset that you're not even open to saying or somebody to say, hey, I don't think you're a king, and you're like, well, I know I'm a king because. You know, I'm a man and I'm a no. A king is more than just being a man. If that's the case, every guy is a king. And it, I'm gonna say this: every man can't be a king. They so cannot. Cannot. Uh-huh. Every man cannot be a king. Are these all self-proclaimed? Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. These are all people who somehow in their mind, some someone told them, "You the man. Or you're this. You that." Yeah. Okay, but if you really step back outside that, real real kings. And I'm an OG king. Mm-hmm. So an OG king can look at a king up and coming king and says he's missing something and if the young king is a smart king and a real king he'll listen to the og king like me and tell who's going to tell them what is it going to take for you to become a king 
and eventually an OG king. In other words, one who's willing to receive a lesson. Yeah. These young, quote unquote, kings, I put it in parentheses, king, um, they lack a lot. And I think it starts early. I mean, you can't be a king unless someone teaches you to all the proper etiquette to be a king. Right. Um, so right. if you're not surrounded by other kings or older kings or OG kings, right. it's really hard for you to become a king. Because so it's not something you just figure out oh, along no, the way. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not something you just self-taught. No, no, uh -huh. no, no. Somebody has to teach you. Yeah. Um, and the kings you learn from, they, they have their pros and their cons. Mm -hmm. It's really up to you to really get the, the core of what it is to be a king. And the core is really leadership and accountability is the, the, basically the, the key to me of being a king. You have to be, you have to be accountable. You have so many quote unquote kings that's not accountable for anything. If something goes wrong, they're, they're gonna blame somebody. A my mama, movie. oh my daddy wasn't there. My uh -huh. mama was this and my dad. Okay, uh -huh. something you know, didn't go right. Something didn't go right. Something didn't go something. right along the way. Nope. So by the time you're forty two, mm -hmm. it's still everybody else's fault. Everybody's fault. Uh -huh. And so now you got people like that calling themselves kings because it's been diluted so much that they're like, oh, if they don't realize in their mind they're really a joker. They're really a pawn. They're not even nowhere near a king. But they have to have something to hold on to to show, like, I am somebody. I, I am a leader. I am this. If you think about it, real leaders don't tell you they're leaders. They just Absolutely lead. Absolutely not. When a real man, a real king, re runs his court, mm -hmm. everybody knows he's king. Uh -huh. He don't go out there and say, oh, you, know, you know, I'm the king, and I, he was a shirt called king. Or get a Burger King hat and put it. Put your hat on, walk around. <laughs> you say, I'm a king. Put a crown on. <laughs> you put a crown on. One. Yeah, uh -huh. dude. Just I'm King Midas. One. I'm king. No, you're not. No, no. you're not. You're, you're playing a role. You're role playing. Absolutely. You're it's like a child's play. Exactly. Uh -huh. So what you have to do is, I'm going to say this. When you want to be something, you have to go to the people who are. If I want to be a business person, and I don't know anybody around me that is a business person, mm -hmm. that means I have to search for them. Or I have to do the research of what it, what it takes to be a business You have to seek person. out. I have to seek out. You have to seek out what you want to be. It doesn't come to you. Right. It's never going to come to you. You can't be right. a queen unless someone teaches you to be a queen. Or you say, you know what? I, I need to be better. I need to be cherished. I need to be loved. I need to be, you know, looked uh, upon as, you know, the role model yeah. king, queen that I am. Yeah. So you have to search for that. But the problem is everybody don't want to do the work. You know, if you're fortunate enough to have someone to raise you to be a king, you're, ble you're blessed. Yeah. Because you have someone who did the dirty work, did the hard work, and they're going to tell you different things, the core of how to be a king. Well, they're going to instill certain things in you. Exactly. So you have a certain level of discipline that the next person doesn't have. There so you when go. it's time to do the work, you've been, you've been doing the work. Yes. Whereas exactly. the other person looks at you like, I'm not willing to do that. That's the work. And that's the problem. Because yeah. this all takes work, no matter... A thousand years ago, five hundred years ago, a hundred years ago, today, a thousand years down the road, the core never changes. Mm -hmm. But you had to be grown enough to take that responsibility because that's a responsibility that a lot of them don't really want. They want the title, but they don't want the responsibility. It right. sounds good, right? You know, it sounds good on 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 IG, on YouTube, and all that stuff. To I'm the king, I'm this. But if I look at you, you're a joker mm -hmm. at best. Mm -hmm. And then you expect me as a quote unquote king to get that queen. Well, it depends on who that person is. She may not, she may think she's a queen, but she's not. Right. She's or never been taught. The, the weird part is you're a joker and you, your expectation is to attract something that is a queen or something that's close to. Think about this. You, if you are. I'm going to say a struggling college student and a guy comes on campus with a Mercedes Benz, dressed nice, smells nice, looks good. Mm -hmm. And you look at the guys who are currently on campus walking around with, you know, you know, gym gear on, barely comb their hair, barely take a shower, you know, just going through the motion of just being a college student. You're going to look at the guy in the Mercedes and say, hey, I want that. Yeah. Because I don't want what I currently see. Yeah. So you're going to do things to get to attract his attention. Absolutely. So, and, and you said, I'm going to strive to get that. Absolutely. Now, you, you're, part, you're not at that level, per se, yet. You're at a different level. But you said, I'm going to strive to mm -hmm. do what I need to do to be in his court mm -hmm. or be in his arena. Mm -hmm. 
because I know if I get in his arena, it opens my world to a lot of different things. And Levels. he should be able to teach me. Levels. Yes. Let me get to his level because mm-hmm. I want to attract men like that. Yes. And um, it's, it's still levels to it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And you have to yeah. understand what level he's on. Yeah. And what level you are currently mm-hmm. on. Because you can't attain certain things without understanding certain concepts and working for certain things, right? Exactly. Um, fancy cars, nice cars. You might you may be able to attain them, mm-hmm. but you have to understand a few things to keep such things, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you can play on a different level that you didn't perhaps work for, mm-hmm. but you're not going to be able to stay there for long. No, no. And then you have to understand there's different types of kings, too. Mm-hmm. It's not just one generic king. Mm-hmm. There's different types of kings, and some of those kings... They have the core, but there's slight changes. You know, sometimes they rule their kingdoms by being aware of the needs of, of everybody in, within their court. Uh-huh, then ideally. And then there are ones who's like, you know what? I control my court based on power, based on what you can do for me. Yep. Based on what I can get from you and how I can mold you to be what I need you to be. Mm-hmm. So you have to be aware that there are Kings like that. So you can't just say, oh, I want a king. So what kind of king are you going to get? The guy with the Mercedes going back to him. You can say, I want that. But you don't know what kind of king he is. You don't, you don't know how he got that money. You don't know how he got that Mercedes Benz or how he's looking. He could be, he could be a businessman. Or he could be doing it a, hmm. another way. A, you know, a, a way that morally you you're wouldn't go around. for. Yeah, you're, yeah, you don't want to be around for Exactly. Him. Then you want to find uh-huh. it. Now, now, understand this. Once you get in that world, and you see how he became the king he is, mm-hmm. that may be the point where you say, you know, I'm not the queen for him. Because he's at a level that, I'm not, that I don't want to be in. It's not worth it. The, 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 the money, the power, all that is not worth because I know what he does to get it. I know how he treats people. And, and again, that's why I say it's multiple types of kings. That, yeah. So you have to understand. In today's wh- world, that's, that's, yeah, that's you leveling up and then you realizing that it was never worth it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. After you're, after you're wasting like, your time oh, and I thought and I money. leveled up, and then you realize that like, I do not want this lifestyle. And if he's yeah. a real king, he understands this. He understands the game that he's putting out there. Because to be honest, mm-hmm. when you're a king, a certain type of king, you know that I'm trying to manufacture my own happiness within my own court. Right. So I only want people that's going to make sure that I stay happy. In other words, you're in control of the situation control is always a part of it yeah but the og king power control d- doesn't concern because you have gained so much just goodwill mm-hmm. that the power is not even, don't have to be told mm-hmm. it's already it shows that you got the power yeah you walk in a room they said damn that that guy has power and people but here's the thing if you're power that kind of power People would gravitate towards you. Absolutely. They want to be around you. Absolutely. They want to know what makes you tick. If I can just get an ounce of information from you to make me a little better on my path to be a king, then I'm, I'm learning a lot. Mm-hmm. But you have to understand, again, who the king is. You have to understand what kind of king you're dealing with. And a lot of people don't have a clue. A lot of people don't have, these young guys don't have a clue what it takes to do it. They think it's easy. It's almost like, I want to. I want to make a million dollars a year. We all want to make a million dollars a yeah, year. Yeah, but do you do the? Are you do willing you do to work? do the work? Are you going to do the work? Uh-huh. And the work is not easy. And the work doesn't happen overnight. Uh-huh. The work is consistent. It's constant. It drags out. It, it's it's down times. It's up times. It's hurt times. It's sore times. And you have to go through that because that builds up the substance of who you are, and you survive it. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna be scarred. And the most successful things, if you took off their 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 crown, you took off their clothes, their scars all over, their right. entire body, their, their body, their, phys- their, their spiritual body is scarred. Mm-hmm. And you look at, oh my God, they survived because they survived every scar. Because yeah. a, a real king knows that they're going to be scarred. Because it, it's going to take you a lot to get there because it's not just given. In other words, you've endured a journey. 
you've endured a journey. You've went on a journey. Yes. Yeah. You got the battle scars to show it. Exactly. To prove it. Um, and you survived it all. Survived it all. Because right. dead men don't get scars. No, they just go in the dirt. And they just sand. sew you up and you're done. Yeah. But real kings become, real OG kings have scars. And you look at it and it's beautiful to them. Mm-hmm. Because I survived. Mm-hmm. Because I went through hell and back. It's beautiful to the women too. <laughs> if you know what you're looking for. Yeah. The woman that's for you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. The woman that's for you. Yes. Uh-huh. And she'll understand like, oh, my, my, my yeah. king went through yeah. hell and high water to get yeah. to where he at. And he respects that because he could now be empathetic towards you. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing. The other thing is missing. It's not about, you know, the control and the power. It's about empathy. You have to be empathetic. You have to know that if your queen is hurt, you may not know the type of hurt, but you should be there to say, hey, you know, mm-hmm. is there anything I can do mm-hmm. to help you? Is mm-hmm. there anything that I can do to, to soothe your soul or to help you get through this? I, I'm not going to give you what I can give you. I can give you me being here, me listening but to you. But you still know how to provide for her needs. You definitely yeah. have to provide for her needs because, yeah. again, that's empathy. All, all, and all this is based on the scarring. Because uh-huh. the scarring is you've been hurt. Yeah. As, a, as a true OG kid, through your experiences, you understand. Yes, uh-huh. you went through the experience. You survived the hurt. You know the scars were on you. You threw Epsom salt on it. You know mm-hmm. it's gonna burn. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna put some uh, what's that stuff back in the day? Uh, uh, cone. You put that on mm. you. I I've never. What is this? <laughs> you put that on your on your <sighs> all. Just put it on you. It's gonna burn. It's gonna hurt. It's mm-hmm. gonna. You're gonna be like, why did I even do this to me? But mm-hmm. that's the only way you can heal. Because you have to seal it. Right. It's going to leave a scar. And you're going right. to look down and say, hey, I remember that scar. And you're going to remember it. Every scar OG kings get, they remember because yeah. they went through it. They yeah. know. It tells a story. Emotion. It tells a story. Yeah. And it makes them, it helped them grow to being the king. Uh-huh. That they are. Their present day self. Exactly. Yeah. Going back to the young guys now, they have to put in that work. Mm-hmm. But a lot of them don't know how to put in that work because they're not surrounded by other kings or other level. The, t- the level of kings that they need to be in order to get there. They, they, they got low-level kings. They got the okay. level one king. Okay. You know, I call them Burger King. Okay. <laughs> They're Burger wow. King. They are fast food Okay. Kings. So the blind lead and the blind still. Basically, okay. yes. Okay, so you have to get outside of your immediate circle in order to level up. You have to go on that journey that we talked about. You got to go oh, on the journey. You can't stay where you're at. In no. order to become something that's great. No. And so while it sounds nice that everybody wants to be king and everybody wants to be regal, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that very I did know everybody's not a king. Um, you're just not. I'm no. sorry. And when they bring that to you, next time somebody tells you, you say, well, I'm a king. So what makes you a king? Yes. And watch how they, uh, uh, because you really don't know. It sounded good. It came on a rap song. Mm-hmm. Somebody say, you know, you need to be a king. And so if, you know, somebody sang a rap song about being a king. That's me. Just like back in the day, a player, a hustler. You know, all those terms. <laughs> oh, we cleaned it up. <laughs> yes. We cleaned we it cleaned up. We cleaned it up from the hustler, the player, okay. the old, the, that. So now you're a king. Okay. But it takes work to be a king. Okay. All levels, of, you know, from the even level one king, there's some work associated with it. Not much, but some work. To be at level 10 king, OG king. Uh-huh. <sighs> You had to survive a lot. Okay. You had to see a lot. You had to see a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. You had to go through a lot of pain, a lot of suffering in order to get there. And you had to learn from it. Because the other thing is you have to learn. You have to be, you have to adapt. Because a lot of people go through pain and all of a sudden it's, it, they, they cringe. It's like, I don't want no more pain. But see, that means you stop your journey. Because you get that yeah. first scar. Like, oh, that's enough. I, I, that hurt. That hurt too much. Yeah. And, and now you walk into, I got that one. I got that one scar across my chest and right in my heart. You didn't and persevere <laughs> through the pain I and keep it. going I, to the end. I, I survived it. And I, and I look at him, I said, you, you, you bitch. What are you talking about, man? You ain't survived nothing. When I take my jacket off, my shirt off, I got scars up and down the back like I've been whipped. But that's life whipping me. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. experience whipping me. That's mm-hmm. situations whipping me. Let me ask you this. Is the high-valued man that we referenced today, is he the same as a king? No. 
Yeah, what, okay, so in comparison, how do we compare the two? High value men are, are basically tied to materialism. High value men think that I make a lot of money, I can buy a lot of things, I can fly, I can go anywhere in the world I want to, I can do this, this, and this. They think money makes them the man. And so they tie their lives around making money. A king understands I'm a king no matter if I have money or don't have money, mm -hmm. but I'm still going to be a king. Uh -huh. And I'm going to still provide uh -huh. because I want to find a way to provide. Uh -huh. I'm not going to just sit there and say, oh, you know, I'm down to my last $100. I don't know what I'm going to do and she's going to leave me. Well, she's going to leave you anyway because you picked the wrong woman. So because you're a high value man, remember? It's about that money. Mm. And that's what's always. If you think about it, you look at him. If you look at any high value man in, in this society, it's about the money. It's about the things, the jewelry, the clothes, this, you know, the hose, this. It's all about those things. Mm -hmm. But those things come and go. But kings understand it's not about the things. It's about what makes the person. It's what okay. makes the lady. And if you can't, if you lose your job day tomorrow, will your attitude change as a high value man? Of course it will. Because your money's gone. Yeah, what makes you your you, value is dictated off of how much you're bringing in. Exactly. Uh -huh. So the more the, money you made, the more value that was brought to yourself. There you go. So now you sit in the club talk about it. I'm sitting back. I'm sitting back at the VIP table. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna have any old body. You got to look a certain way, smell a certain way, walk a certain way. You right. picky because right. now you're like I can afford to be picky because what I got this Ace of Spades sitting here running to me about $300 a bottle. Yeah. I'm going to have any old somebody sitting at my table. Whereas a king is born. There you go. King is born. <laughs> king, king walks is born. around. He's yeah. like speaking to everybody. And then, oh, yeah, that's a nice uh -huh. guy. But then he's a, he's an air bottle. Uh -huh. He doesn't. Everybody like a, wants to be around you. Everybody yeah. wants to be around you because you're not trying to impress anybody with your things. No. Just you being there, you impress people. Yep. People want to sit and just have a conversation. Yep. You know, this this. Talk, wait, what, where you, what, where you feel about things? And let me tell you the other thing about kings. Real OG kings know a little bit about everything. The, the, uh, the guys, the high value guys mm -hmm. know a lot about nothing. Because their thing is always tied to making sure you get the money or making sure you get certain things so you can stay at a certain level. Or they're the guys who are always talking as opposed to the people always listening. <laughs> That makes Always a difference. Talking. The person who knows just a little bit about everything, mm -hmm. you know, that's because they're willing to listen to, you know, people from all walks of life. That's how you grow. Yeah. If you sit back and you just walk around and listen to people, if you see someone, every time someone, they make a comment, the, the high value guy makes a comment, and then somebody says something, and you're, yeah, yeah, I already did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, I already done that. No, no, no. You do, do this. I so love now, that. All of a sudden, you're like, Damn, I can't get one word in. Damn, I'm trying to have, I'm trying to say something to you. So at uh, that you, point, you thought it was a conversation. No, it no conversation. You thought it was a conversation. Oh, no, it's about uh, me. It's yeah. all about me and yeah. how much money I make. How you ain't making that kind of money. If you listen to me, you make the kind of money I'm yeah. making. Yeah, do what I do. Do what I do. Yeah. But that same high value man go home every night by himself. Mm. He goes home every night because why he's so picky that he wants a certain type of person, a certain type of woman, a certain type of this. Well, it's kind of hard to find that because, again, you're so picky. You yeah. don't pick yourself out of nothing. You go home, nice 15,000 square foot penthouse. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to throw that out there. Mm -hmm. You got to, you know, you sitting on the top penthouse looking outside, you know, drinking your cognac, smoking a nice cigar with nobody. Yeah. Ain't nobody going to get half of my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you already know yeah. how it go. Yes. Uh-uh. She not going to get half of me. Mm -mm. No, yeah. not going to happen. Not going to happen, Captain. So. That's why you have to understand, women have to understand how value men have those particular issues. Mm -hmm. And then, then there's, there's, there's a selfishness about them. Right. You know, they don't, you know, as long as you fit in my, my, my role, you're good. The moment you, you start to press outside of that, oh, you got problems. Yeah. And then you're trying to give me problems. I don't need no problems. I can find someone else that will sit there, be quiet, look pretty, and. Be my yes girl. Oh, you gotta be a yes girl. And surround yourself with yes people. Uh huh. See, those guys surround themselves by guys like them to yeah. make them feel good because they all need each other to feel yeah. good. You know, so, and so that's what women got to understand. You get those guys, what you're going to get. A king, he may not be making a million dollars a year. He may be making 50000 a year. But he's cool with that fifty because he knows this is going to give him a base and he'll work on doing other, other things. Okay. But he's Absolutely. not impressed about impressing other people. Yeah. Like, you know what? 
My boy over here got a BMW. My boy over here got a Lambo. He's humble. Very humble. He's humble. Hey, Lives under- within his means. Yes. Uh huh. Those are those are the, kings. the people he signed up to take care of. There, there's no there's a, a humbleness about him. There is a the empathy about him. He listens to you. Uh-huh. He wants to listen to you. He wants to learn from you because if you are that a king, you're willing to listen to people because you want to make sure that their lives are better. Yes. You want to make sure listen to other people. You have to because again, you're gonna say to yourself like. If, if, you're, if your queen is going to do some things, you're going to say, well, what, what can I do to help her get through whatever? For instance, say she wants to go back to school. Yeah. You say, I, I want, she want, I, you yeah, know, I'm I tired of this back. job. Yeah, I'm I want, yeah. Let's I, level up, man. I, I got I to mm-hmm. go become a nurse. A self, I'm going to say self-centered, man. I value self-centered. He's going to be like, what are you going to do to get yourself there? Because he ain't going to use, he ain't going to spend his money. <laughs> he got plenty spend my of money. it. Yeah. I, I always spend this money this way. Yeah. What? And I don't know if I'm going to be around with you long enough. And I don't feel that you, And then if I have to do that, then you ain't my level anyway. Because yeah. I have to level you up? Yeah. No, nah, you should be already here. And then, yeah, you're going to be missing out on taking care of me. Exactly. That's yeah. less time for me. Yeah. Now your king is going to say, okay, what are we going to do? What do we need? Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. I got what some money here. Need? What do we need? Yeah. I got some money over here. What you trying to do? He's going to try and say, oh, how long is it going to take you? Four years. Okay, we may have to get some loans. I may have to get a second job. You know, because I, I don't want you, I want you to concentrate on getting your, your, your stuff. So I, if I got to pick up extra, I'm going to pick up extra. Right, right. I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to work together. So we may not go out a lot because we can't afford to. And you're going to understand it because you say, hey, you know, he's helped me get through school. Right. He's going to be supportive. You know, those nights when you're studying, he's going to like, okay, you know what? I need something to eat. You haven't eaten? I'm going to fix you something. I'm looking out for you. Because he wants you, he knows that if you're better and you're happier, you're making my life happier. Right, we're and better. And us better. And we're better yeah. as a team. And we're, we can do things. That move the, we can move the earth together. That's the king. The self-centered man. The high-valued the man. The high-valued man. Mm-mm. So yeah. m- this is why you have to be aware. Which means you have to know what you're looking for. Women need to look at and say, oh, just don't take what he says to you. And say, oh, yeah, he's a, no. Mm-hmm. Look deeper than that. Mm-hmm. Just sit back, be quiet, and watch. Seek out your king, in other words. Yeah. Your king. Yeah. Not a king, Stop looking your king. for the high-valued man. He's yes. not looking for you. Nope. <laughs> N- and never will look for you. <laughs> he's not looking for you. Yeah. No, because you got to fit. And the other thing is, you have to fit a certain, a certain lifestyle, a certain look for him. Mm-hmm. Um, which also means, as this, this high value man gets older, he becomes even more pickier. Because think about it. If he's a high value man at 35, he's going to look at certain women a certain way. The high value man at 45 is going to look at women a much different way right. than the high value man at 55. Because at that point, he is so selective because at that point, he's got it all. So you have to fit into his mode in order for you to be in his world. So what age group is he dating? 55. Oh, at 55, he's definitely dating 30s. 30s? He, late 20s and 30s. And I'm going to tell you mm-hmm. why. Because at a, at a 55, you understand, that guy understands that when you get a woman in their 40s and 50s, they're pretty well set. They're pretty much who they are. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I'm 55 and I don't really like what I see in the 40s, I don't want to deal with it because it's going to be hard to change them. It's going to be hard to mold them. It's going to be hard to, you know, it's like you're stuck in a mold. And I'm like, I got to do some stuff. You uh, already know that 40. this is exactly what it is. It is what it is. too much work for you to deal with it. And I don't want to do that. Yeah. I'm like, no. I, this is why I ended up at 55 and that kind of guy. Because yeah. I did all the work necessary to get here at 55. I'd be damned if I'm going to somebody 40 years old and tell me, girl, I'm, man, I'm this, that, and other thing. But what I'm thinking is you're 40. Uh, you probably had some kids. You had, probably had some relationships, and you. I don't really want. I'm not looking at you like that. I'm not looking at you as. I may date you. Uh-huh. I may. I may break you off. So something, something. Uh huh. But other than that, no. Seriously, okay. I'm looking at the 20, 29, 30 year old because by that time she's still flexible. Where I can change her. I can mold her how I want her For to be. For a real relationship. For a real relationship. For a real relationship. Okay. Because then you, if you say, I want to have kids, which, you know, at 55, there's some guys that may not have a kid at 55. Uh-huh. So you may say, you know what? She's 28, 29. 
I can mold her and maybe end up having a kid in a couple of years. 55. 55. Now, his time is numbered. Yes. He knows damn well he'll be in his 60s and having a kid. Because yeah. now he realized at that point, he probably won't see the kid. You probably won't be able to see. Uh, I mean, realistically, uh, men men die earlier. Math. Just doing the math. Yeah, we're doing the math because yeah. men die earlier than women. It's seven years younger than women overall. Um, so he realizes that at fifty five, he's starting to look at legacy. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. okay, what I'm gonna do if it's only me? I, who I'm gonna pass this down to? So now, if I find a nice younger woman that I can mold, who has a good foundation that I can, and she's willing to listen. And I'm willing to help her. Then you can you can vibe and do something, and maybe have a kid in a, in a year or so, a couple of years, okay. max. Okay. You, you want to give me 58, 59, 60. Yeah. So and she then off old sperm <laughs> and acting like I was the problem. Oh, did you just go there? No, I'm sorry. That's my bad. <laughs> oh no, okay. you just so said. I was just oh curious. no, I was just. Curious. Oh, oh, oh um, no. <laughs> what happens when you have the high value woman, uh-huh. right? And she's 55. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is she dating the 29-year-old man the same way? See, women, I think, they think differently. Like, Obviously, they think differently than we do. Yeah. I think at 55, you're a woman, you know, you're probably looking for someone who's established. Right. Um, someone who's mature. Okay. Um, someone you can have fun with, but yet make sure he can handle his own. Meaning that he just not coming in here just to be... You know, be his sugar mama. You know, take care of him. He got to come with something, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so we can have some fun, and I can pull you in and pull you out whenever I feel like it. Because she can, because she has the money, she can pretty much do with that. But yeah. then she has to understand that. Will he marry her? Will you marry him? I, hard to say. It depends on what she's looking at. Um, you can kick it with him. Say, you know, you you the make younger it, person. Younger person, you can uh-huh. kick it with him. Um, but then you run into the issue of how young. So the high, so so the high valued woman is not the sugar mama. She, I wouldn't consider her a sugar mama because at that point she's pretty well established and uh-huh. she pretty much know what she wants. So she's gonna say, "I want this," and she's not gonna deal with anything else. She's like, first of all, I ain't have no babies. <laughs> I'm fifty five, so that's out the picture. So you ain't. He, <laughs> you ain't gotta worry about that. Nope, ain't gotta worry about that. Uh-huh. So he better not be silly. Not be, you know, a silly dude because I don't want to be, you know, I can't get at this level and deal with a silly dude. Yeah, because that's exhausting. Yeah, and okay. I don't want to deal with that. And then he'd be out there playing around. I don't want, I'm too old to deal with that. So I want somebody who's a little more established, don't want no kids. Or if he has a kid, okay, see what kind of person, kind of father he is. Because you, you're going to run into that. A 55 year old woman, you deal with a 40 year old guy, it's probably a good chance he has a kid. Okay, okay. So you probably deal with him and see, you know, where his head is at. And, you know, if he's not a gold digger or he's trying to, you'll find out too. If you, you know, you say, hey, let's go such a place. And he's like, hmm, that, I can't afford that. Then you know that, oh, he's thinking about taking, he's thinking about paying for the Paying for this, okay? Well, He's you aware. Test his pocket. Yes. <laughs> so the lady's like, <laughs> "Yes, you gotta test his pocket." We do just a little quick test. Hey, how about we fly out to Rome tomorrow, type of thing? Yes. Okay. And if you say, oh, I'm good. Oh, okay. Now you know the oh. So you ain't got no job to call and say I can't. I'm not coming because I'm going. To, you're gonna go out of town, out of the country. Yeah. For a couple of weeks. Um, so that means he's just sitting there waiting for someone to take him somewhere. So we, oh yeah, that's a serious test. Yeah, what type of job you got? How deep is your bank account? What type of credit you got? There you go. Mm-hmm. And, and, and a high value woman is gonna look at that. See, because okay. nowadays you can go on and say, let me go ahead and do a search. If you get, if you really thinking about doing that, quick, <laughs> we do a little search on we'll this. Pretend cat. like it's a Google search, but we all know it's a little bit deeper. Than we Google. know damn well you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna spend that money, do a, a deep dive. You're going to spend that $19.99 to see what kind $29.95. of. $29.95. All that. Just You're going to spend just a little deeper. I'm going I'm to have my little fingers in on there. I'm going to find out what's going on. Make sure he ain't got no, no warrants. Uh-huh. He ain't been to jail. Uh-huh. He ain't got nothing. His credit nothing is. Nothing crazy n- popping out. Nothing you know, crazy. Oh, nobody. Nothing ridiculous. Nothing crazy. Yeah. And his bank. His his uh, FICO score is is uh, seven ninety nine. Uh-huh. You're gonna love that. Then you're gonna look and say, okay, is he clean background, high FICO score. We nice can talk guy. now. We can talk. Yeah. And you should be able to talk to him because now you see that he's not just out there looking for somebody like you. He's mm-hmm. really he's grinding. He's trying to do what he needs to do to become a compatible mate for someone. He's striving to be a king. He's striving to be that next level. 
He's striving. And a lot of guys will, let's say you weren't brought away in the king. You weren't surrounded by nothing but thugs, criminals, and just low lowlifes. <laughs> that, I mean, it, and again, this, that's the life for a lot of guys out here. You surround, you, your, your uncle, your uncle's uncle, uncle, all of them be in the same prison. They all, they even got a, a, a cell <laughs> with their names on it. Like, mm-hmm. the uncle going back, your great, great, great it's uncle going back. Yeah, I get it. Everybody the same prison. So, you know that you're not going to learn nothing from them but how to continue to be a criminal. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to be better. You know, so I'm going to have to search. I'm going to find somebody. Maybe somebody at work. Um, maybe um, read some books. Look at some movies. It, it takes a lot because you're going to have to gather because you never had it. You never had the foundation of stability, of some stable role model to yeah, learn from. You a, know a stable. It. Yeah, so yeah. you got to go search for it. And you go, it may be somebody, your best friend's father. It could be somebody else's uncle. Mm-hmm. But you're going to take all those little bits of pieces to make you level up. You know, you're like, I'm a level one king. You know, whew, I made it be a Burger King. Yeah, at least I made it here, though. I made it I'm here. not a jester anymore. I am yeah. not a joker. I am a level one king. So now I can strive to be better. And he's going to keep striving. He knows it's, it's, it's going to be a lifetime work. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, in a lot of cases, being a king is a lifetime work. Mm-hmm. It doesn't stop when you're like, whew, I, got, the, I got, got it on my head. I got the crown on my head. I'm looking a certain way. No, 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 no. It's going to take a lifetime because you have to evolve. Yeah, because you forget that you would be training as a child. The yes. prince. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> you just don't wake up and start training to become the king. You train as the prince. Exactly. See how you conduct yourself as a prince and walk into that. There's a code of conduct that all kings have to follow. Mm-hmm. And you have to learn that. If you didn't learn it as a, as, as a prince, eventually you got to learn to be a king. Yeah. You're going to have to learn it. Yeah. It's not one of those things where you're like, you know, I can, I can stumble on it. Yeah, you can stumble your entire life and still be a joker. Yeah, still going to miss. Still mm-hmm. going to miss. But you have to know that you have to do the work to become that. And that goes back to, you know, the, the women and, and the guys who want to be kings and queens. It's work associated with that. Mm-hmm. It's a learning experience mm-hmm. associated with that. It's more than just the word to kind of throw around. Yes. It's absolutely a bit of leadership and responsibility that goes with it. Even if, like the little children who want to be princesses. Mm-hmm. My daughter and I were walking into the store the other day and she was like, Mommy, you're the queen. I'm the princess. And I was like, true, mm-hmm. absolutely. <laughs> yep, yes. But do you also know that that comes with responsibilities? And we just kind of spoke about an expectation, you know, very lightly of a princess and how a princess is supposed to conduct herself mm-hmm. and how a queen is supposed to conduct herself. Exactly. Because we don't just get to give ourselves these titles and just, you know, act Mm-mm. any old type of way. No, you can't. You right? can't. And your yeah. daughter is blessed enough to have a queen uh-huh. to learn from. Absolutely. There's a lot of princesses that don't even have a queen. Mm-hmm. They just got a, a wicked step stepmama or a wicked witch. Mm-hmm. So that is wh- their mother. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So what did what did the princess learn from that point? Mm-hmm. What happened? You don't learn nope. proper etiquette. No, at all. Uh huh. So then. They start looking at other little princesses who maybe had the same type of mama. So eventually, you have a whole bunch of princesses looking at wicked witches' mamas, mm-hmm. and then you're surprised when they grow up to be a wicked witch. Because mm-hmm. the blind led the blind, the angry led the angry. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Frank, Mm-hmm. 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 
Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, it's important to know that you as a queen is teaching the prince's daughter how to be a queen. Absolutely. And you also understand that you as a queen is not only influencing your daughter who is the princess, you're actually influencing other little princesses who don't have queens as, for mamas like you. Well, so for my take, the queen influences much of the community, mm-hmm. right? It's sort of the job of the queen, so to speak, right? Mm-hmm. You interact with the community. You interact with the poor. You interact with the common folk. You interact with the children. You interact and influence all of these people in your um in your kingdom, right? Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. these people underneath you. Mm-hmm. And you teach people to um, walk in your footsteps, so to speak, right? Mm-hmm. To strive to live how you live. And so you live a clean lifestyle, so to speak, mm-hmm. um, because you're the face that most people see. It's unlike the king, mm-hmm. where he's so reserved and taken back. The kid's the kids see him, mm-hmm. but they sure. don't spend the same amount of time with him. No. So he does not work on the children the same way that the woman works on the children. Mm-hmm. And so the way that the woman moves around, it's not the same way that, or the queen moves around. It's certainly not the same way that the king would move around mm-hmm. um, to be one who kind of... Um, Tether's the fence, where you have to be um, strong but still graceful, mm-hmm. right? Because exactly. you still want to be able to connect with people, mm-hmm. but um, you can't allow people to take advantage of you. Um, exactly. You have to be able to empathize with people, but not necessarily sympathize and give all your energy and self two situations right exactly the children are feuding one kid hurt the other kid's feelings they didn't hurt you my feelings can't be hurt right but i have to stop both of them Mm -hmm. right and punish them both and tell them what is proper somebody's going to be sad i can't carry that emotion i have to carry on exactly um so the queen speak uh walks in a way that is something that one can model right the Mm -hmm. children look up to that person as an absolute role model Mm -hmm. um and the way that they speak and the way that they interact with others and the way that you um kind of go about in the community Mm -hmm. for today's woman um you would see someone who was educated Mm -hmm. um that doesn't necessarily mean career um, restricted, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but educated in a, um, in a worldly sense mm-hmm. to where you just really know a lot about a lot because you've spoken to so many people, mm-hmm. right? True. You've seen so many things. You've actually allowed people to take down the layers and gotten to really know people on levels that um, other people wouldn't allow because you come in so soft, right? Mm -hmm. Very true. You have to stay soft, right? Mm -hmm. Again, we're tethering the fences of staying soft, but also staying strong. Exactly. The queen never loses that strength. No, never. Right, it never falters. No. Um, Because 
pretty much her strength comes from her king. So he he's going to keep her strong if he's a good king. Because That's true. she goes out and she gives herself to so many people. That is very true. She's very selfless. Um, so the very idea of being caught up on materialistic things of today that so many women can get caught up on. Hey, what you just said was women. You didn't say queen. You said women. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a difference it, it, in having nice things and getting caught up on just the materialistic things of today. At what point is enough handbags enough? And, 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 and you're right. And, and who suffers when the queen is not a queen but becomes a... A woman like, of today's world. Exactly. Yeah, it's normally the family unit, and then it trickles down into the community. Because, again, how I move Mm -hmm. is what the other young ladies see me move, Mm -hmm. right? And so then they want what I have. And so if I show them that I'm out here accumulating lots of things, Mm -hmm. then they start to assume that their job is to come up behind me and also accumulate a lot, lot of things. Wow. So then they demand things from their counterpart. So then the young boys come up and they see the queen or the person who they thought was a queen mm-hmm. accumulating just stuff, lots of yeah. stuff. And they think that they're supposed to contribute to this <laughs> accumulation of stuff. Again, yep. the queen has the children looking at her. And you know what? I don't think a lot of women realize that yeah. in today's world. Yes. I think because if you're brought up older, you know, like we are, um, we're used to seeing Big Mama. Mm-hmm. And Big Mama controlled. I mean, mm-hmm. she, it wasn't a, a money thing. It was, it was kind of like, I expect my lady, my young women, a young princess, to, to prince and princesses both, in yes. some cases, to yes. do certain things and act a certain way. Yeah. Um, there's no way, for instance, I'm looking at just dress. I, I see so many young princes dressing in such a way that you shouldn't be age, age appropriate. It's the princess. Not age, the princess. Uh-huh. Just putting on things that, and, and when you see it, you know, and I'm like, how did you get out the house wearing something like that? And then you see the, 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 the quote unquote queen mama look like her. I said, oh, you getting it from her? You teach this what you teach the princess? Yeah. Is, is this? So how did it get so distorted? Um ease. Remember the queen's feelings and how I empathize with you, I do not sympathize with you. Mm-hmm. So although you wanted to wear that really cute, super short dress, and mm-hmm. it is gonna break your heart and baby girl, I feel the heartbreak, but I really, I don't give a damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's I'm, take off the dress. There you go. Right? And yes. that's the difference between the queen and just the woman, mm. of, and just a woman, right? Yes. Where, like, you actually care about your child's feelings, but you don't care to mold them into something that's going to be great. Because the woman yes. who's dressed like their child does care about their child's feelings, cared so much that they didn't want them to be miserable and say, yeah, you can wear that outfit, right? Yes. It's a cute outfit. Yes. I know it's cute because it looked just like mine. Exactly. But, why- but it's for me and my age group. Why would you be having this on? But then that means a- you bought it. No, I did buy it. Yes. So you. you- so in that store. <laughs> oh, my God. When I went and picked up my outfit. Right. Uh And you were with me because I take you out shopping again. I teach you everything Mm -hmm. I know. And we were in the store and I pretty much allowed you to shop around in the same section that I shopped around. Mm -hmm. And you picked up the same outfit that I picked up. And then you said, can I get this? And I said, no. And then you said, "Eh." you know, you cried. Wow. And I cared and said, you know what? Oh, you broke my heart. Oh, no. Your heart is broken. My heart is broken. I don't want your heart to be broken. Get the outfit. No. No. Like, oh, baby, I I remember when my heart was broke at that age. And guess what? The queen that was teaching me told me, put that down. (laughs) Yep. Exactly. Yep. This is my department. 
we actually don't shop in the same department. Nope. No. And we will carry on. Yes. It's just an ease of teaching. So when yep. you say why, why does the um the mom and the child have these similar? It's it, it is an ease of teaching. Wow. I don't have to kind of go through the hard struggle part again. That's the idea of being strong. Yes. And soft at the same time. Yes. Yes. It's not an. It's a tightrope. As I say, you're tethering it. It's it's a hard walk to um to walk. Yes. It is. And, and I think there's, I'm just going to say this, it may be controversial, I don't even care. We have such a low number of actual queens in today's society. Yes. Which is causing the other issues that we're seeing in our society. Um, and at Absolutely. some point, the queens need to get together and say, I don't know how you do it, but you need to come together as a unit and say, a queen unit and say, we need to go ahead and, and put these princes together and get uh -huh. them straight. We need a little, we need a little training. Yes. That's what you're saying. I think like yeah. when you, and this, this sounds crazy, not, not crazy, but I'm going to say it like summertime, you know, the kids got out of school and everything. It's like the Queens is some, some sort of training program for young princesses during the summer months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they can, know how to properly dress, how to properly eat, how to properly order, how to... How to properly conduct themselves. Exactly. I don't want yeah. to train them to be, you know, just some robots, but there's certain core things that they just need to know to be out in this world as princesses trying to become queens. Right. And I'm thinking if they're not getting it from the quote-unquote, or lack thereof, queens at home, mm -hmm. it has to be someplace where you can send these babies to learn the core of how to become hmm. queens. We don't got, I don't, we I don't, don't know that. anything we, about like that. And that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Cause I could say the same thing for our princes. Same exact thing. Right. It's like, you need to say, I'm going to, again, go back to a, our earlier, one of our earlier episodes and, and unfuck their minds mm -hmm. and say, yeah, you are bob this way. But to be honest, you're going you're gonna to die in this society being the way you're, you're heading. Yeah. Because we can nip it in the bud. But yeah. we just need to give them an alternative. Say, okay, forget the TVs, forget the, the videos, forget the s songs and all that stuff. Let's pull you in, in in a setting that we can teach you yeah. how to do certain, how you handle certain things. Let how me you introduce do. you to something that you're not necessarily familiar with. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, and this, it's sad because that inf that's going to influence the next round of, of princes and, and princesses and kings and queens because if you don't give them that then you're gonna be used to jokers who think they're kings i mean we're pretty much diluting the population yes especially when you talk about living um in america yes right? yes yes each it seems like the schools just get Yes. I hate to say dumber and dumber no. each year. <laughs> they, it is. talking about how the countries that are not our country are just outdoing us. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like we're diluting, you know, ourselves and to speak with, within our own culture of people. Mm -hmm. You know, we're really suffering. Yes. Um, as far as how, we're, how we perform. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and nobody cares. Nope. The greatest society really doesn't care. It's, let me tell you, the greatest society don't really care about anybody, mm -hmm. it, on, unless you have money. If mm -hmm. you have money, then they care about you because now you can influence certain things. Right. We as people who don't have money, we need to say enough's enough. You, the, the teacher's not going to teach. The teacher's not going to teach your kid how to be a functioning human being. Mm -hmm. They're there to teach reading, writing. They're not going to teach your kid how to be great. No, no, they're not. Let's let's be real. Nope, you're right. Right. Yep, you're absolutely Especially right. Especially today's teacher. Oh. And I hate to say it, because I used to believe that at least that when I was in school, there was at least a good handful of teachers. Yes. Solid handful yep. in the building, every building. That's true. That, that was out there. If you was good, mm -hmm. trying to get to great, mm -hmm. they would get you there. Yes. Right? They will. They in would. In today's school... I don't know who in the building cares 
but it's less than a handful. Wow. Yes. I think it's an, I just said every building, it used to be a handful. This mm. is like every other building. Uh, yes. You that is let, true. You might have one or two teachers who actually care. Maybe. And they on their way to being retired. And can't wait till that day come to retire. can't wait. And who's replacing them? Nobody. Not them. Yeah. The people that they're replacing them aren't the queens they used to be. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to collect a check, keep the kid quiet. Basically, basically babysitters. Mm -hmm. You're babysitting kids. Mm -hmm. You're not really teach them anything. You're like, as long as you don't cut nobody, shoot nobody, or stab nobody, and you good. At this point, that doesn't even matter. Damn. Wow. <laughs> that, that's true. That is very they true. They sit inside the classroom and let situations be created. Where do you think the stabbing, shooting, fighting, all that comes from? Oh. It started in them rooms. They yeah. just turn in their head. That ain't our problem until it's a big problem. Wow. And, who, and then there's a kid in there who really wants to learn, mm -hmm. but can't learn because he got knuckleheads in there, cause confusion. Now, did the class clown, the moron, not, I won't say moron, but moron in training. But the kids, don't, the, the teachers ain't really training them, you know, trying to say, hey, you know, you can't do that. Because next year, they want to fight the teacher. Which, again, <laughs> back in the day, if you try to fight a teacher when we was growing up, well, you, we would have been having this podcast. I've been gone. What what we just say? <laughs> little princes in training? Little princess in training? Yes, that's what we this should is, be training. This is a, this is, that's misconduct. Yep. You're a young boy. Mm -hmm. And you want to challenge the person who was supposed to be teaching you, right? Mm -hmm. Person be honoring that person who was so willing to allow you to sit here and and learn from them. Learn from them, right? Yes, doing you a favor, and we can get so angry and aggressive to where we fight and um just act any old type of way yeah, and to me it's like that starts at home mm -hmm. so again it goes back to to kings and queens being in a home teaching the the princes and the prince how to act mm -hmm. you know you hear people oh you know my kid don't act like that at home yes, i'm pretty they sure do. they do yes, you just don't do. you may not be aware because you may, no, your head may be stuck aware. on a phone or on a computer or in a bottle or who knows what but that's your job as a parent. I've never seen nobody's child go from <laughs> zero to ten. <sighs> yeah. And you didn't know about it. Of course you do. Of course you do. By but you didn't want to handle it. third grade, you know about it. You know your child. Exactly. Teacher done called your house too many times. You done <sighs> saw that on the call ID because you know you ignored the phone calls. <laughs> yep, exactly. You're like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. Yes. And then you look at them, what you, what you doing in school? And the kid ain't going to tell you. Because kid like, you know, mama, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what they're talking, what they calling for. you don't want to really know, so I won't really tell you. And then, so you're setting this kid up for failure. Mm -hmm. That's basically what we're, we're talking mm -hmm. about. We're, you're setting your young prince and princess up mm -hmm. for failure. Because now, as they grow, it's not going to be cute when they're little. Uh-uh. Now they're uh -uh. going to become little adults when they become teenagers and mm -hmm. acting a fool in school mm -hmm. and, and dress a certain way. But that's your princess, though. Ah, that's your princess. Yeah, but she was able to cuss the teacher out. Oh, because she walked into the classroom late, and the teacher said something to her. But that's oh. your princess. And that's the problem we are having today because you cannot wait till your princess is tw is fourteen, fifteen years old. Now I'm going. I'm going to put my foot down and make mm -hmm. sure that you follow my rules. They're about to get your house. Mm -hmm. You want to hear that? Mm -hmm. So now you got somebody in your face telling you what they ain't going to do. Your princess is telling the queen what she ain't going to do. Yeah, what you're not going to do to me. No, I am. <laughs> yes, you will. I am. But, but technically, I bended it to you. Mm -hmm. So mine's not going to be in my face telling me what they not going to do. Because I've been raised you the right way. Been. been. Day one. Day one. That's a prince. He's yes. in training. He was in training from day one. There you go. There you go. It day didn't one. It just start. And it never stops. And you believe it, it or not. It never stops. It never stops. Mm -hmm. Because once you grow, once you become, you know, an adult, you're always going to be, they're always going to come back mm -hmm. to you. Because mm -hmm. if that lesson you taught them as a kid got them to where they are. Yes. They're going to constantly come to you because they're still learning. Yes. And you're still evolving as a queen. 
because you're like, you know, you don't know everything. Is you going as you get older and you start to adapt to certain things and Absolutely. you're going to uh, get them aware of certain things and you're going to tell them and there's certain things that they may see that we never seen or you never seen mm-hmm. as, a, as a queen that they're going to say, you know, mama, this is happening out there. And then you say you go back to your core value because no matter what happens, you stick to your core values. Absolutely. I think that's what happens a lot. A lot of people get out there and say, oh, well, such such can do it. Why can't I do it? Well, such such don't live with me. Mm-hmm. And if such such didn't live with me, mm-hmm. she'd be like you. And they wouldn't be doing that. Mm. Choices would be different. It would have been raised different. Then here's a question. We're not all queens <laughs> and kings. So this is very true. And here's a very good question. What is say that your little prince, princess has a sleepover? And she gets other little princes to come to your house. Mm-hmm. And you start to notice that some of them other princes are acting a little older than they should be. Saying little things they should be t- saying. What do you, as a queen in your house, how are you going to handle that situation? It can go both ways. It can be a slumber party with the princes. Mm-hmm. Where you thought it was, you know, a certain age group. In a certain age group appropriate conversation, you would expect that mm-hmm. kind of went sideways. <laughs> yep. You yep. know, mm-hmm. um, and it could also be, you know, your princesses where you thought it was a certain age group and you thought an age appropriate conversation that they would have had went sideways. Mm-hmm. So, number one, that conversation with that little group slumber party. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if it's the males or the females. It can always go sideways. I always say it goes back to being the queen. Mm-hmm. I affect all of those children, right? Yes, you so do. So I'm going to speak to all of those kids in that group mm-hmm. about what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. Because whatever you're speaking about, me and my daughter already talked about it. True. Whatever Absolutely. you talking about. Me and my son already covered that on some on a level that is appropriate for your age. Exactly. So for me to correct a child's conversation that's perhaps a too a, a little too grown for her age group or for his age group, mm-hmm. it's nothing for me. Okay. Because I'm a queen. <laughs> that's my job. It's to keep you kids children mm-hmm. as long as you can stay children. And clearly, you're in the group where you're affecting my child directly. Oh, yeah, that's true. So I really got to work on you. That is very true. I really have to work on you. And for the boys, in my, in my opinion, boys tend to kind of fall for peer pressure a little more mm-hmm. than females. So I'm really going to speak to the male friends around you. Who's yes. speaking whatever bit of crazy. I'm here to correct it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to do it in front of him. I'm going to do it, you know, behind his back, you know, whatever. whatever. Mm-hmm. And as many times as possible. Now, am I going to limit how much interaction you might have with the person who might be a little overexposed? Mm-hmm. Perhaps. Ah. Perhaps. Okay. Because... I don't want to make my job harder than it has to be. Exactly. I don't have to expose my child to something that I've already identified as being too much exposure. Exactly. And, and, and you brought that up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now you talk about music. Now, let's say you, what type of music would you let your, your prince, princess listen, listen to at, at her current age? Uh... How, what do you mean? What kind? Well, you know, we was growing up. We in TikTok era. Uh, yeah, exactly. We're in TikTok, TikTok era. So, so six and seven. Yeah. They, it'd be, yeah, it'd be bad. I'm not letting it. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, my opinion, a lot of children are censored, meaning they know better, so yeah. to speak, right? Mm-hmm. And you know that if that song gets to saying all the words that you know that you're not allowed to hear or say it, Ooh, repeat. Yes. You, first of all, you shouldn't be recording on top of that song because it's the first thing you have to learn. Because these kids have to understand how to survive in that whole virtual oh world without God. you. Even when you put the restrictions on their devices. That is very true. I mean, you can restrict up that device <laughs> to where they almost hate it. Oh, right? wow. Is, <laughs> that is that bad my, now? 
that was my what you mean now? That was ten years ago. That was my son's first phone. Oh, he gave the Lord. phone back. Oh, he gave wow. The, it was an iPhone. Oh, and when okay. I say I did that, I did that. Oh no! <laughs> so he's trying to search around because you know, you know, they go. Hey, yeah, the, the it'll latest, re, it'll song. restrict petty stuff if you get too carried away with the restrictions. Oh, really? I think he was, he was. I don't maybe eight or something like that, eight or nine, and he he said I can do nothing on this phone, and he gave the phone back, and I had to calm down <laughs> oh, the restrictions no. on the device. But um, that was that was before TikTok, even though. Yeah. Um, but I just feel like with TikTok and all the other little apps that they have, they will get exposed to some. They can get exposed to some crazy music. Snippets yeah, at least. That's Snippets. true. Yeah. And they don't need much because these kids are smart. Mm-mm. All they get a few just words, a piece. just a little piece, just a little and, piece. and and you start going mm-hmm. to that particular level. But children will um what you allow them to listen to. Um, what I listen to. I listen to a lot of soul music, a lot of clean music. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah. Yeah. But then you let's say you have a <laughs> one of their friends, one of the other little princes listen to uh, Megan Thee Stallion, or yeah, I'll, I'll, first of all, me and her mother's gonna have a whole conversation. <laughs> you, That's can you the imagine? Other part. I'm not leaving these people, these children's parents, out of these conversations. Ah, yeah. so so the con- so what you're saying is it's just not conversation just for the little ones. No, it's you're gonna bring in the other supposed yeah, queens. Yeah, no, I'm gonna call them later because if oh. you're we're, for, the scenario was we was at a slumber party. Yeah, right. And I kind of walked past the room and I overheard something that you know they probably shouldn't have been saying. So I nipped that right in the bud. I went in. I said, "Whoa, what are we talking about in here? Let me tell y'all a story about this and what we do and don't do type of thing." Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Later on, I'm gonna have to call up. A few moms. Yep. Hey, this is what we spoke about. Yes. Let's be mindful of this. Mm-hmm. Let's be careful of that. Yes. And that's and then what would happen if she said my daughter can listen to anything she wanna to listen girl, to? Girl bye. First of all, <laughs> what we're not about to do no. is about to go to war. Because I'm gonna let you, you say know, girl, girl bye. Yes. Because I wish a mom would, you know, be on the phone with me when I'm telling you, you know, something not about your daughter, about our daughters. There you go. Because you just brought that up. We're we're a family. We're, we're a village. Yeah, your what your child is doing directly influence what my child is doing and feeling and seeing. Mm-hmm. See now, I restrict my child's phone. Mm-hmm. I talk to my kid about what they should be seeing, mm-hmm. what is appropriate to be allowed to enter into, you know, your space. Yes. You forgot to have that conversation with your Oh, I ain't going to have that conversation. You ain't going to have it at all. You don't even care to have it. No. So now when your kid's sitting on the bus next to my kid, doing whatever they want to do on their unrestricted device, mm-hmm. I involve my child into that. Yes. Because then you know it's going to happen. Well, see, that goes back to the princess, the prince and the prince's understanding and knowing right from wrong and, and really standing up and being a leader. Absolutely. Still a follower. And Absolutely. that's the other issue. You teach queens and kings teach their their kids their princes and princes mm-hmm. leadership. Mm-hmm. You don't follow everybody; mm-hmm. they follow you. But how many times my little prince is gonna come home and say, "Hey, ma, um, you know, such and such had this on their cell phone today," before they just kind of dismiss them as having bad behavior? Yep. Yes, that's true. Sooner than later, they're gonna start normalizing certain things that other people do. Mm-hmm. So it's like you're you're really limiting that overexposure. Yes. Or at least you're attempting to. Yeah. Because your job is to teach your kings, to yes. your kings, your your kings to be like minded people. Like minded people. Yeah. So yeah. again, that's telling these babies to avoid peer pressure because you know that becomes an issue because peer pressure becomes a, a big big issue in in you know, when it comes to those kids growing up. So we just have to teach them leadership. That's important. You have to start them young. Because if not, if you yeah. don't teach them leadership when they're little, yeah. you'll follow anybody. Yes. Um, absolutely. Starting from them being as small as just six months, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're allowed to do certain things. You start ushering them into certain positions. Mm-hmm. 
two, three toddlers. Mm -hmm. Start teaching them to take up for themselves. You're fostering yeah. that leadership every day in a male and in a female mm -hmm. to make choices that are our own choices. Yes. Right? It's yes. not a male thing. It's not a female thing. Right? It's the right thing to do. The right thing. So yes. You teach your children to do the right things um, and understand that you can raise your children mm -hmm. or you can raise kings and queens. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's not the same. Nope. I think we're going to wrap it up on that note. Hey, it was a great conversation. I enjoyed you. Always a pleasure. Always, <laughs> T. You know, we all, it's always a pleasure. Always. Um, you're on the mic with the M and T. Peoples, we'll holler at y'all later. Peace.